there for cheap money. Anyhow, I wanted to take today <laughs> to do a, what do I want to call it, maybe an esoteric video about the recent Powerball winnings um, and some things that I never mentioned online here about casinos in the area, Foxwoods, Mohegan, Twin River. Uh, and I'll expand on that either on this video or on the next one. I try to limit these to 15. I haven't yet figured out how to extend my time on YouTube. I just, I, I was able to do it about a year ago. I just now can't figure it out because I, I'm not clicking something. They send you a code security code and then they you know you send something back you click some button and then they extend your time limit to over 15 minutes which is what i, I got to do for my responses in my guitar practice sessions which I'm ho i hope uh mike gross and others are looking at uh yeah i want to start out about the powerball the recent powerball yeah that was this past wednesday um and as you know, the Powerball jackpot was won by three states, Puerto Rico, Texas, and North Carolina. So, first of all, the idiot who just found out two days after the drawing, you know, how the drawings on Wednesday night and Saturday night. So, whatever idiot it was who just found uh, out that she won in North Carolina, man, you have got to be an idiot not to know that you just won. I mean, I, I can I can understand if if you bought 150 quick picks, and you know some of those quick picks were in your kitchen knife drawer, and some of those in your in your cookie jar, and some of those in the glove compartment to your Chevy Impala. Then I could understand, but you know, to just figure out that you lo that you won the Powerball two days after, you got to be kidding me, man! Come on. That's nonsense. That's just laziness is that is basically what that is. Anyhow, I I have to say if you bought tickets and didn't win or you only matched a couple numbers like I did, then don't feel too bad. Obviously, you'll if you keep buying tickets, you are on the approach to eventually winning. I know the experts will say that that's not true. Uh, you know, it's a one in 75 million chance that you'll win. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people, especially through the news and, and stuff like that, that have won. Obviously, I haven't looked at every one of Powerball's winners, but anyhow. Also, I recommend what I do with another guy, uh, and that is set up an arrangement with a friend of yours. You know, so that you buy five tickets, he buys five tickets, and if you hit, you know, you split it halfway down the middle. You know, right down the middle, I mean, you know, half and half. After taxes in Massachusetts, you Massachusetts people get killed, right? Because uh, your state taxes are higher for that, for those winnings than it is anywhere else. And obviously, places like Florida would be a great place to win because there's no state income tax there, I believe. Still no state income, income tax. And I don't know about Vermont and New Hampshire. I don't know how much you pay in taxes if you win in those states. But I'm sure it's still high in those states. Anyhow, the bottom line is don't feel too bad if you didn't win. It uh, It's a shame to give the money away to three winners in three separate states. You know, I would rather have it about ten winners in the same state. You know, something like that. I'd, I'd rather see Massachusetts and Vermont or Maine begin to win a lot of these jackpots instead of just the crummy million-dollar match five, you know. Uh, but I don't want to ramble on too much about that. The next subject, uh, gaming at Foxwoods and Mohegan and places like that. First of all, since the summertime, since Foxwoods, whatever million dollar summer giveaway which was bullshit anyway that was the biggest scam all you really win in that was one box of you know glass bottles with plaid tops you know plaid 
pink, silver, and red tops, you know, with a hole in the middle. Now, God knows what those are for. You know, a children's drink, maybe. Uh, since then, since that summer of 2014 bullshit giveaway, and bullshit is really what it was, uh, they have been renovated. So quite a bit of the floor at Foxwoods is under construction. Last time I was there, uh, Grand Pequot was pretty much closed down except for a little cluster of blackjack and Spanish 21 and a little poker, probably 12 tables altogether. When the whole thing used to be way more tables, like, you know, four times 12 tables, which is what? Do the math. Anyhow, uh, that part of Foxwoods, Great Pequot, is under construction. The last time I was there, which was a couple months ago, they had the floor dug up and they were laying down fiber optic line. Um, on that floor, they had the floor like cut open, drilled out. And they were laying down fiber optic line and other wires that were going somewhere. Uh, as you know, the new Fox Tower is, is still happening. You know, it's almost done. I haven't been there in a while. Maybe I'll include a picture in this video. Maybe I'll cut and paste that right now. That looked like it was actually headed somewhere. I can't believe it. I still can't get over that they're putting in all those new stores that nobody is going to go to, such as Gr J. Crew. Nobody is going to go there. They're just going to order online. Plus, you know, you go to Walmart these days, you get this this stuff for, you know, half price that you, or less than half price that you pay at the big, uh, you know, mall stores like J. Crew and Banana Republic. You can pretty much go to Walmart and get the same thing, except it's lower quality. But who cares? So... Uh, so what Fox, the Fox Tower, the so-called Fox Tower at Foxwoods is for is sort of the well-to-do person who doesn't really care much how much they're spending. Money isn't an object to those people because they're idiots. They'd rather go get what they need today for $60 when you can go get it at Walmart for, you know, 28 bucks. It just takes more driving to find a Walmart. Anyhow. So that's what the Fox Tower is going to be. First of all, it's not even a friggin' tower. It's two floors of shopping, so I don't know why they call it a tower. They're basically renaming uh, MGM, I think it was. They're, they're renaming the MGM Tower to the Fox Tower, which I think is stupid since, uh, for political reasons, since the, you know, the MGM lost its license with the state of Connecticut, so they can no longer legally be named the MGM Tower. So that's a silly reason. Anyhow. Um, and the other... Oh, yes. The, yeah. The most obvious thing about Foxwoods, when you park outside in the lot, you know, by the new Burger King and the gas station over there, that outside lot where the cops park, ha, 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 you didn't know there was a state police barracks at Foxwoods, did you? Of course you did. Anyhow, when you enter that part of Foxwoods, you got the race... Okay. You got the Hard Rock Cafe to the right and then the race book to the left. When you enter, there's a big wall, which I noticed going up a year ago at least. More than a year ago. Um, correction, not as much as a year ago. I forgot. Maybe this is February, so it was beginning of last summer. So we're talking May, June of 2014. Um, that is all completely covered now from floor to ceiling with this re white retaining wall. Last time I was there, I could smell the gases there that were used to, you know, maybe plug holes or things like that. But it smelled like, you know, uh, uh, polyethylene paint, you know, the kind of spray paint or whatever paint that dries really quickly, quick, quickly you know, in the summertime especially, so that would be an alcohol-based paint, what we call it, ethylene glycol paint. It smelled like that. I'm sure there were other silicone polymers and shit like that that were used for construction. But the major point being is that Rainmaker is completely shut down. <laughs> Stupid! So, you know, it was never that, that low on foot traffic years ago. Before they, before they decided to shut it down. So I think that was a stupid decision. Uh, economically, of course, they're going to say it makes sense for them because, well, they don't want to hire all the people and pay the electricity to heat the place. 
and keep the slot machines running and being serviced and emptied, you know. So for them, it's a smart decision economically. But for people like me who want to go there and play blackjack, it's, you know, really some harm done there because now it's, you know, as a blackjack player, you need volume. You want lots of tables and you want to go quickly from this table to that table to that table, uh, on, you know, in the course of a morning or an afternoon or what have you, whatever, whenever you decide to play. So now Foxwoods is like five sixths shut down or what it may be three quarters shut down. And then you have MGM and there's not, not as many tables open there except for the high rollers pit if you do want have the urge to bet fifty dollars a hand i hope you don't um so that's my little my little uh outline overview of foxwoods they've really torn it down now i hope whatever comes to rainmaker is it blows my mind i hope whatever is done after the construction at rainmaker is just kills me you know it's exciting i'm just blown away by how much better it is you know and I, and I think there's something telling me in the back of my mind that that's not going to happen that they'll probably put you know like another dunkin donuts there will be <laughs> you know how there's the dunkin donuts across from atrium bar there'll probably be a satellite dunkin donuts you know right where the security office was you know imagine that or a you know a hamburger joint like johnny rockets uh, interesting that Foxwoods became that way because it's like they're not in the business of selling food except, you know, they opened the Pizzeria Regina. Um, they put all that fancy woodwork on Cedar's Steakhouse, which makes no sense. It was fine the way it was. What else did they do wrong? Oh, they got rid of the cafe. They got rid of that cafe where you could buy a tuna fish sandwich or, you know, a chef salad and have the guy prepare it and put the dressing on it. They got rid of that. That sidewalk cafe that was there since the 90s is, is gone. Plus the floor, that redstone floor that was there originally, that's totally gone. Uh, that's all that all that space is now populated by other shops that don't that, you know, I just can't get over. What I'm saying in a nutshell is they don't necessarily need to be there. They don't get a lot of foot traffic. They're just shops open with a clerk there ready for business, but nobody's really buying anything in there. So it's kind of a, a kick in the face for Foxwoods to have done all that remodeling since nobody's shopping at those shops. Um Except, obviously, you know, the occasional transient who needs, you know, a, a stupid t-shirt that says Foxwoods on it. Although, I have to say, some of those dolls they have up there of Indians, you know, it'll be like this doll caricature stuffed animal of an Indian are pretty cool. Anyhow. And I think those are even priced pretty uh, strategically, you know, competitively so that poor people can buy them and stuff like that. Anyhow. Um... There was a few other things I was going to say about the whole industry, about Foxwoods itself and Mohegan. I'll get to Mohegan in a minute. Let me cut this video and blow it into Final Cut and post it right now. I'll be back.